Hi guys, Ryan here for the Game Week 12 team selection video. Now there's still two games to go because I'm recording this on Thursday afternoon, but I can assure you I want to get through Game Week 12 quicker than Cristiano Ronaldo wants to get out of Old Trafford. In fact, this guy on Twitter can probably sum up my emotions towards Game Week 12. I'm actually pretty certain that Oscar Pistorius would strike a penalty with more conviction than Jared Bowen. Now, if things haven't gone great so far, you'll be able to see on screen my team and it's quite clear what the, the main issues were this game week. My current rank is down to 223k, so it's a pretty hefty red arrow, which is obviously frustrating. Um, I think I expected to have a bad game week, and I think I said on my previous videos, this, you know, it was almost inevitable that I was going to get a red arrow. But we all know with FPL, it's kind of the hope that kills you. So the first issue or the first frustration is Simakas. Now, I could have left him in my team in the hope that he got a one-pointer because I went into game week 11 with best case scenario having 10 players. Um, I kind of altered my transfer plans. It was always Trippier in for James and that's worked out brilliantly. Um, it was potentially going to be Madison to another midfielder. And so, yeah, so my plans changed. I brought Anderson in for Simakas with hindsight, which is obviously a wonderful thing. It's cost me seven points. The other frustration is the um, Crystal Palace double up in defence. Now, at that price point, you can't be expecting clean sheets. But I think my, my thought process was that Wolves are the team that are struggling in front of goal the most this season. Um, you know, Diego Costa hasn't played for a long time. He's going to, even if he can get anywhere near his level, it was going to take him a while to get up to speed. And I just saw that as an opportunity where I could do, you know, I just had two differentials in there where if they do get a second clean sheet in consecutive weeks, I would probably be on a green arrow now. Um, so yeah, it, it is what it is on that front, but it would have been nice if they just stayed switched on because um, I think that the clean sheet was there for the taking. Wolves didn't look particularly threatening in that game. Another quite annoying factor is Ivan Tony didn't get a goal. I think it went down as two big chances. Um, watching the highlights earlier, I saw, I saw two pretty good headers, the second one particularly. Should have worked Kepper a bit more. Um, but with that, I think Brentford looked good. They they definitely should have scored um, from what I saw. So um, happy to hold going forward. But, you know, just a few of these things, if they just go in your favour, you can you can really turn your, your game week around. So I think Ivan Tony probably should have ended up with at least one attack in return. And finally, it's Harry Kane and more specifically Tottenham's performance. Now, I watched this game um, last night and Tottenham looked so unambitious. It reminded me of a you know an, an old Conte team when he was at Chelsea, when that, that real defensive mentality where they're almost setting up for a draw. Very similar to Mourinho and there was just no ambition. Kane and Son, there was that chemistry wasn't there. And all credit to United, they absolutely dominated Tottenham from start to finish. They could have scored more. I think Rashford had two or three big chances saved um, by Hugo Lloris. Anthony looked brilliant, I think, all across the pitch. Bruno was phenomenal. Best game I've seen from Bruno this season. So it's not a criticism of Man United um, because they were fantastic. I just feel like the Tottenham that we've become accustomed to didn't show up. So looking ahead to game week 13, I think there's a lot more to be positive about here. Looking at FPL review, I'm sure many of you have heard of that. It's um, uh, kind of like a, a points predictor tool. Um, they've got a lot more uh, analysis going on there and they do transfer suggestions and stuff. So it's well worth having a look. If you're struggling to make a decision, um, it's, it's sometimes you know, it's helpful to see what that's predicting. Um, and it's saying um, before transfers, I should get about 57 points, which is relatively high. Um, after I make my transfer, which I have already decided on, it's, it goes up to about 59 points. So I'm optimistic for this game week. So if we go ahead and we remove um, Jack Colback from my team and in his place with the funds that I've kind of had left over from game week 11, we're going to bring in Gabriel Martinelli. Now, I don't think too much needs to be said about this. A lot of people have been on him since game week one. He's, you know, I... I my kind of gut feeling was that he wasn't going to be nailed long term. I felt like Fabio Vieira for um, Emil Smith Rowe would come back in and just complicate that position. I knew that G uh, Jesus and, and uh, Bakaya Saka were going to be the two that were nailed. 
And I just didn't fancy Gabriel Martinelli. But having watched quite a few Arsenal games this season, he's clearly a top talent. Um, and he's probably not too far behind Bakaya Saka. So I, I can't see him losing his position, not before the World Cup. Um, he's clearly the first choice left winger. And on top of that, he's a phenomenal talent. Um, I maybe thought he's a bit slow. You know, he's, he, for a player of his age, you maybe expect him to be a bit more pacey. But his footwork is is brilliant. He's he, he finishes like a centre forward. I think he's probably a more natural finisher than Saka. And you know, I could have got him at a, a lot cheaper price. I think he's up to six point nine. But um, given his effective ownership, I think it's a no brainer. So um, I'll be glad to finally have him in my team. And then, as I said, similar to Trippier defend myself against that effective ownership. Next is James Madison. He's a player I want to talk about because I think he's, a, he's such a top talent. There's a reason that a lot of us had him in our teams. I've kept faith with him and I'm hoping that I'll see some upside, um, you know, kind of rewarding my patience. There's a lot of managers that understandably moved him on. I think next it's probably worthwhile talking about some of the players that I would want in my team. Um, it's quite straightforward. My, my team hasn't changed a lot in recent weeks. I'm only making one transfer, um, as I said, bringing Gabriel Martinelli in. So there's, there's nothing really needs to be said there. I think it's probably worth touching on three or four players that I would absolutely want in my team if I had a, a, an extra free transfer. And the first one is um, Trent Alexander-Arnold. So still gutted that I, I moved him out instead of James. Um, you know, I, I didn't think he'd be fit now, so... There's no way he would have left my team. If you can afford him and with their run of fixtures, I think he probably gives you enough coverage on Salah as well. So if you haven't got Salah in your team, um, Trent, you know, he's going to get an assist or, or a goal. And it probably if he can combine that with a clean sheet, he's a nice differential at the moment. I've not checked his ownership, but I imagine a lot of a lot of active teams in the top 500,000 or top million have probably moved him on. So Trent's an absolutely fantastic option but unfortunately I've kind of had to pick between Trent and Gabriel Martinelli next is his teammate Mo Salah so I know it must be frustrating at the moment because you don't know where he's going to be playing is he going to be in his kind of natural right attacking forward role or will he be playing right midfield and I think the latter is not ideal um, but he should have scored against West Ham you know he had a he had a big chance I think He's still the same Mo Salah. It's just that Liverpool team aren't functioning as as they were in in previous seasons. So if you if you had him at the moment, I think he's an absolute hold. But ultimately, I will be captain in Haaland, as I've said before, every single week that he has a fixture. So for me, he's a little bit too expensive. Um, but if you're looking for what is now a differential. Um, and a player that will undoubtedly score goals between now and the World Cup and, and after the World Cup, I think he's a, he's a great option to have. And, you, and, you know, don't don't judge Mo Salah on last season. You can't, you know, you can't be getting 30 attacking returns every season. And, and he might just have patches where things dry up, but it doesn't mean that he's not going to go on a run after that. So Liverpool do look a bit better. They beat Rangers um, or they smash Rangers. They've beat West Ham. They've beat City. They're on a, a decent little run now. And I wouldn't be surprised if Salah starts to pick up some nice returns. So if I could fit him into my team, he would be there 100%. Third on the list, and I'm pretty sure he'll be coming into my team in game week 13, is Phil Foden. He looks, you know, he, he looks like he's going to another level this season. I think he has six league goals already. He's, I think, the, the nailed winger in that team. It was Haaland and Foden with Mares, Alvarez, Grealish, whoever it may be. But even with that said, it doesn't mean he's going to play every game. And maybe that's something I'll have to weigh up. How many minutes do I think that Phil Foden's going to get? Um, because if he's on the pitch, I don't, you know, I'll, I would have him on my team. If I, could, if I could guarantee he's going to get three starts in the next four and comes on as a sub and the other, I think that's enough for me to bring him in. Um, I think the Brighton game is the tougher fixture out of the next four. So it's, you know, maybe I can use this as a, uh, just to get a bit more information of, you know, just to be absolutely certain how that City team are going to be lining up. Um, and also just to see where City are, you know, they've, they've lost to Liverpool. They've had a, you know, they've had a week off now. Just, just 
it's a tough fixture and it just gives me a bit more confidence in going Triple City and Phil Foden in particular is the right move. So I'm happy to ha hold tight. And my final option, if I, you know, if I was on a wild card or if, if I had two free transfers, which I don't think many people will, but I would be looking at an Arsenal defender. I think they've got three away games in the next four. So maybe that's the only drawback. But Arsenal, are, they're a different team this year. They're, they're going to be the team that I think challenges City. I think that's quite an obvious statement to make, but I think they're there for the duration. I think Saliba in particular has really tightened up that defence. He's an absolute you know, class operator. I think it's long-term. I think it's going to be Gabriel or Ben White who play centre-back with him. They've got three terrific centre-backs there. And obviously White's been playing on as a right-back, but I think long-term Saliba is that nailed centre-back. So that's probably where I'd be going. The full-backs is a bit, is, you know, they can't seem to stay fit. So I, th I think it's worth the extra money. He's obviously a goal threat, not only in the air, but on the floor. So, um, you know, I, I might consider that after game week 13. But if I was on a wild card, certainly I'd have an Arsenal defender in there. Right, that's everything for this game week. I would have ideally done a watch list video, but it's just not possible with the tight turnaround and work commitments, etc. So in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this, please remember to like and subscribe. If you've got any questions, leave it down in the comments. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one.